Sorry, Alex? You'll just have to take it on the chin and let it ride. We're going to be appallingly rich. Now, how are you going to square that with your old Calvinist socialist conscience, eh? Oh, money won't change me, Tom. My character can't be sidetracked by the threats and baits of bourgeois society. Well, it'll change me. Exit Thomas Hampton, semi-detached man. I'll get one of those big Edwardian places with Virginia Creeper and a dumb waiter. <laughs> yes, yeah, standing in its own ground with the golf links behind and the shore in front. Oh, pity about the pollution. Oh, you're just a congenital killjoy. Gee, I can't get used to it. Bags of beautiful lolly. Yeah, I got my bank statement this morning. I was worried sick I was going to be in the red. I was starting to get a grey pebble by soul. Oh, this office. <sighs> There's got to be some changes made, man. Oh, I don't know. It's about the most decent in the building. It's got the most decent view. It's got the only view. But the charm of a bus shed is quick to fade. <laughs> you know, I don't know why you don't get a decent place out by the sea, Alex. Away from the stink of the city. No, the suburbs wouldn't do for me. Uh, I was out your way one morning, but <laughs> not so long ago. And I don't mind telling you, Tom, it frightened me. Nothing but dustbins. <laughs> dustbins? Well, nothing but dustbins out along every avenue. <laughs> Must have been dustbin day. Dustbins on every pavement. No people. Beautiful dustbins they were. It looked as if the Martians had taken over. Dustbins standing to attention at every rustic gate. Yes, I suppose it's much more interesting where you live. <laughs> All the garbage spilled oh. picturesquely along the back alleys. Oh, the poor old commuter with his love of order and sanity and civilised pursuits. Oh, I know all about the commuter, Tom. I used to commute once when I was with plastic coatings in Glasgow. Do you ever fornicate with your eyes? In the train? <laughs> God, they're all at it. Three years I was commuting, and all these guys you'd see on the train, the same ones every day, always in the same seat, the same paper lighting up the first flag at the same point along the line every day. Then the other was driving up the pole. I'd see these men in the train in the morning, and I'd worry for them. Oh, then I'd think, forget it, you've got concerns of your own. Well, you should have done a crossword or something. <laughs> and the creepiest thing of all. Have you ever noticed how you see somebody on the train every day for years, and then one day suddenly he's missing? You don't notice straight away, it just suddenly comes to you. Weeks, months later. I haven't seen old Utsik lately. You know, the one who always wore thick grey knitted socks or whatever. And you think about it for about ten seconds. That's a human being, vanished forever. And where the hell's he gone? Has he committed suicide? Been posted to the stoke on Trent sub-branch, won the polls? <laughs> oh, you give him ten seconds between the share prices and tonight's TV guide and forget him forever. You make it a real magical mystery to her. <laughs> anyway, I'll go on commuting till I vanish. Only I'll go first class. I'll be a superior suburbanite. Oh, they'll be absolutely rolling in the stuff this time next year. Well, I shouldn't count your chickens. I've counted them. 28,000 responses in a fortnight. I hope you tooled up the cope on the production side. Well, Tom... Oh, come on, Alex. We gave you plenty of warning. Well, it's... It's called a snapping just a wee bit. What do you mean, a wee bit? Well, for one thing, we haven't got the storage capacity, let alone the labour and materials. Alex, we gave you loads of warning. Gear up for a massive response, we oh, say. Yes, that's all very well, but how often are we told that? And, and then we're left with, with a load of stuff in our hands and then standing idle. There's never been anything like this since all the loops. Since crackers. Well, can you handle it, or will we have to farm some of the work out? It'd be pathetic if we got the customers begging for it and couldn't deliver the sucker punch. Oh, hey, wait, Tom. As far as I can make out, half of the people who've been writing and have just been having a go at us. Asking who the hell we think we are. What do you mean, half? 75%? <laughs> Absolutely bloody furious. We really hit a raw nerve. It's marvellous, I tell you. They wouldn't touch our product with a set of drain rods, but by God, they've heard of it. And the other 25% have given firm orders. You know, Harry Thomas can't move for checks and postal orders. This is the biggest thing since... The yo-yo? We'll just have to contract it out, that's all. Yep, Diane? Excuse me, Mr. Hampton. Mr. English called from Leeds. His plane's grounded by fog. He says he's sorry, but he won't be able to make it this evening. He'll see you at ten in the morning, if that's all right. Have these advertising types never heard of British Rail? Oh, all right, Diane. Ten o'clock. Oh, could you ring my wife? Tell her I'll be home at the usual time. I said I'd be staying late with English. Yes, Mr. Hampton. Hey, what was I saying? Oh, yes, 25%. Work it out. 25% of 28,000. I can foresee the time everybody will want one. Yeah, that's the beauty of it. I mean, good God, it's criminal not to have one if you think about it. Louise was saying this morning we ought to have one ourselves. Shall I tell you a secret, Alex? 
I've never even used one myself. Oh, you've got a big thrill coming. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, those 7,000 customers are before me in the queue. 7,000? Look, who do you think we are? We're Destiny Plastics with one shed and an office annex. But I see I. Well, plenty of sheds on the Stringer Industrial Estate. There were no problems recruiting men. Yeah? I'm sorry, Mr. Hamilton, but the exchange says there's no such number. Come again? Your house. I rang the usual number and the girl said I must have made a mistake. Have you got a new number? Silly bitch. Uh, not you, Diane. Yeah, okay, I'll ring myself. Yes, Mr. Hamilton. Yeah, the Daily Telegraph wouldn't carry the advertisement, you know. Yeah, said it insulted their readers. <laughs> Hey. Uh, uh, Hello? I dialed Millwood 2438. What do you mean, wrong number? I live there. 11B Serenity Drive, Millwood. Thomas Hampton. Oh, God, stupid. Oh, that's some stupid... <laughs> what? No such address. I wonder where I'll be sleeping tonight. Yeah, look, can I have a word with your supervisor? Oh, never mind. I can't spend all afternoon humouring the deranged. Oh, temper, temper, Thomas. Well, have you ever suspected there's this great conspiracy going on to frustrate all our efforts? <laughs> hey, did you see that peculiar thing in the paper? That lovely story this morning? Oh, uh, about the world losing weight, you mean? No, no, not that. The one about the mice and the millionaire's will. When they came to find this millionaire's will, it had been eaten by mice. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss. Look where you're going. Oh, good, there's a struggle. Oh, Chris, an empty seat. Excuse me, please. Oh. Hello, Chris. Nearly didn't make it. It's gone dark early, hasn't it? Fog's coming down. Now, busy day, Chris. Been on the GGs, have you? Do you mind? I'm trying to read my paper. Oh, Lord, we are high and mighty tonight. Well, do I know you or something? Oh, does anybody know anybody? That's the big metaphysical and philosophical question on every lip, isn't it? Oh, look, it's what I forget. Valerie says you're to bring Brenda out for a drink tonight. Valerie? Look, would you please stop annoying me? Oh, come on, Christopher. I've had a hard day as well, you know. <laughs> you know what Valerie saw this morning? A bloody big duck walking down the middle of the road. Quacking! <laughs> Excuse me, but I've no idea what you're talking about. And frankly, I don't care. I don't know you from Adam, and I can't imagine where you got hold of my name. Now, will you please leave me in peace? So what are we playing? Strangers on a train? Excuse me. Hey? Excuse me, please. Can I get past? There's a chap down there I want to work with. Be my guest. God love us. Another one ripe for the livery of one. Crossing your teeth, please. Thank you, sir. Good evening, Harry. <laughs> Proper piece super, isn't it? I say, did you notice anything strange about Mr. Rogers as he came through? Thank you, miss. Thank you. What's that, sir? Mr. Rogers. <laughs> he made out he didn't recognise me on the train. Would that be Mr. Chris Rogers? He sir? said he didn't know me from Adam. A friend of yours, did he, sir? Oh, good God, Harry. We've only been coming through your baddies together every night for the past four years. That's all. Oh, yes, sir. What do you mean? Oh, yes, sir. Now, if you excuse me, sir, I've just got to get down a bit of paperwork. Are you trying to make out you've never seen me? We meet so many. Hundreds pass through here, can't know them all. Good night, sir. Hey, just a moment. Yes, sir. Where's the poster gone? The big one. Poster, sir. You should be disgusted with yourself. Well, then, no need to get insulted. The poster that said you should be disgusted with yourself. With Lord Kitchener pointing out. It's on this wall. I picked the sign myself. You're mistaken. I get it, yeah? Oxford was the last one we had. Or was it Oxfam? It was here this morning. Yes, sir, if you say so. Good night, sir. The man wants his head looking at. God, what a climb. Dense yellow fog. <laughs> what a great conspiracy. They're all cracking like an old ceiling. Even the ticket collectors go in the same way. Now, what lad is he trying to climb? Give us this day our Librium in the daily bread. Our affluent oasis, the broad pavements expensively carpeted with leaves, lapped by ten miles of sea and river, refreshed by westerly winds bearing no pollution. God, no pollution. <laughs> Can't see a damn thing. Ah, this must be it. Ah, yes. 
George Stone's monkey puzzle tree leering through the reading. God almighty! Where's my house? I've come to the wrong street. <laughs> Plastic fog. It's steady, Thomas. It's starting to get you. Consult the nameplate. Nameplate around here somewhere. Ah! Here we are. Serenity Drive. Now, hold on tight, Thomas. There's an explanation. There's always an explanation. Yes? Good evening. Tony, for Pete's sake, what's happened to my house? I beg your pardon? Where's my house gone? Old chap. Your house? I'm sorry, I... All right, Tony. Spit it out. It's all right. I know there's some perfectly logical... Horrible. Look, I think with this fog, you've sort of blundered into the wrong street or something. Where's Valerie? Where are my kids? Where's my bloody house? She that's all this shouting. This chap seems to think it's no, houses. Jean, Jean, tell me the truth. Go on, I can stand it. What was it? A bomb? Do you know this man, Tony? Oh, good God, Jim, we've been next door neighbours for years. Next door neighbours? Your house was joined to mine. Where's my house gone? It's absolutely raining. What well, was it? A gas explosion? I, I, I can't understand why there's no rubble. It's so... neat. Close the door, Jean. I don't like the look of this. Nor do I. Tony, Jean! <sighs> Valerie's Michaelmas daisies. Blast this fog. It should be Michaelmas daisies around here somewhere. There's nothing. There's no room in front of the house. There's no gap. Johnny's semis are full-blown detached. It'll increase the market value. <laughs> Tony will like that. <laughs> oh, where are those Michaelmas daisies? Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. And what's your pleasure this bright moonlit night? I want to report a missing house, Sergeant. Missing house? Right you are. Now, where's that report book? Right, here we are. Now... What sort of house is it? Chicken house, caravan, a semi. With great pebbled ash and bay windows. Four bedrooms. There are Michaelmas daisies in the front garden. You want to report the garden missing as well, do you, sir? I'm quite serious about this, Sergeant. Why, of course you are, sir. It's a serious matter. Now, would you mind telling me just where this house was the last time you saw it? The address is 11B Serenity Drive. Oh, a nice part, Serenity Drive. And your name would be? Hampton. Thomas Hampton. B. We don't get many of them round here. Eleven B. Just a moment, Mr. Hampton. We've got a very detailed, uh, quite old detailed plan of the area. Very useful, as you'll appreciate. Yes, of course. I'll point out where we are. Uh, yes, sir. Where you are. Uh, where you... Uh, where it was. <clears throat> well, Eleven B Serenity, was it, you said? Yes. Serenity. Here we are. Eleven B, you said? Yes. Well... I'm sorry, Mr. Hampton. Sorry? Well, take a look for yourself. Look, I made a mistake. The draftsman, the surveyor. Oh, I don't think they do that, sir. But he jumped straight from number 11 to number 15. Oh, that's quite common, sir. Some people have a prejudice against a number 13. Have myself, as a matter of fact. Some people won't live in a number 13. Well, that's why I changed mine to 11B. And was there anybody at home, so to speak? My wife? And two children. And a dog. And where are they now? They're gone. Don't you understand? When I got home tonight, the house was gone. And they were gone. Everything had... gone. Yes. It must have been a bit of a shock. Excuse me just a minute. That you, Joe? Listen, is Dr. Kelly still there? Could you ask him to slip in for a minute? Uh, Tom. Doctor, what do you want a doctor for? I know you'll be on the electoral roll. Pay rates and have a vote, don't you, Miss Revton? Yes, of course. Have you got a copy there? Yes. Everybody's on the electoral roll. Oh, Dr. Kelly. Uh, sorry to bother you. Uh, just maybe before I forget, a vital information for you, pass. Uh, that fellow I've just looked at, uh, Higgins, Baggins, whatever it is, I want him kept in the cells overnight. It's not just booze, he's pumped himself full of phenobarbitone. 
to polish himself off if you let him go home. It's liberty all, Doc. I'd like to meet one character, just one character in this suburb who isn't living on drugs or going round the bend under his own steam. Uh, did you want me for something? I thought you might be able to help this gentleman, Doctor. Mr. Hampton. He says his house has gone missing. His house? Did you say... Uh... Yes. My house. Yes, that's what I thought. But what kind of house? Purple dash semi, bay windows, Michaelmas daisies in the garden. A semi? Well, what about the, uh, the adjoining semi? Still there. Fully detached. Oh. Sorry, Mr. Hampton, you're not on the electoral roll. Have you been keeping well, Mr. Um... Hampton? A bit of a stitch, you'll have to run for the train, you know. I'm not a mental case, if that's what you mean. And have you spoken to your neighbours about this uh, development? <clears throat> well, have you? Yes. And what do they say? They claim they don't know me. <laughs> they must have gone out of their minds. The couple's on both sides. Uh, do you mind if I just take a look at your eyes? Go ahead. I haven't taken any drugs. There. Now... Just look straight over my shoulder. You won't find any dilation. Mm. Now the other one. Mm. Nope, nothing wrong there. You sound disappointed. Over the years, Mr. Hampton, I've developed this thirst for explanations. I'm afraid even the gloomiest ones give me a bit of a lift. I'm a trifle disappointed myself. What do you mean by that? Well, if there was something clinically wrong, if you could convince me that I was under some nice, well-documented delusion, it might help. Well, the best advice I can give you is to get off home and get a good night's... Yes. It's rather awkward, isn't it? Well, uh, if you'd call in tomorrow morning, Mr. Hampton, we might have some news for you. Who knows? You'll be making... Investigations. We'll explore every... Uh, put out feelers. I'd be grateful. Yes, well... What are you going to do now? How do you mean? Where are you going to spend the night? Spend the night? Oh. Well, where am I going to? I suppose my mother will put me up. And where might she reside, Mr. Hampton? She lives in Park Bridge, Borwick Crescent. You've heard of that, haven't you, Sergeant? Yes, I know Borwick Crescent very well. And her name is Hampton, surprisingly enough. She's my mother, Mrs. Kathleen Hampton. I'll just look her up in the phone book. She's on the phone, is she? It's all right, Sergeant. I know my mother's number. Yes, sir, all the same. It's Park Bridge 679. But go ahead, go on. I can see what you're driving at. Uh, thank you, sir. Now then, Hampton. What on earth am I going to tell her? Uh... Well, you're right. Hampton, Mrs. K, Park Bridge 679. I knew I'd got a mother. I knew it. Valerie could be there with the kids, damn it. Please, God. Now, don't overexcite yourself, Mr. Hampton. Well, I'd better be off. I don't really know what you can do about my house, Sergeant, but if you could... Keep an eye open. Hey, you're off, are you, sir? Straight to my mother's. No, I'll take another look at Serenity Drive first. Why don't you give her a call, sir? Oh, she won't mind me barging in on her. She's my mother, you see. You could call her from here. Better ring her up, old man. What do you think, Phil? <laughs> you've got a suspicious pair of coves, haven't you? Oh, well, I suppose you've got reason to be. Use my phone. Here you are. Uh, thank you. I'm sorry. That's all right, sir. Fingers are trembling. Coughs. Here you are, sir. Now hold on to that tight. That's it. I'll dial for you. Is it ringing out? Yes, thank you. I can't keep my hands still. I've never... Park Bridge 679. Mother... Mother, it's Tom. Uh, I'm sorry, but you've got a wrong number. This is Park Bridge 679. It's a number. mother. It is mother, isn't it? it? I know your voice. Did you say... Oh, I beg your pardon, but I thought you called me mother. You remember your son, mother. Who is this? <laughs> Let me have a word with that. Hello? Mrs. Hampton? Oh, hello? Mother. Mother. I'm afraid you're getting me confused with some other Mrs. Hampton. Uh, this is the Millwood Police, Mrs. Hampton. I think we've made a bit of a mistake, but if you'll just bear with me... Police? Uh, yes, but nothing alarming's happened. But if you could just answer a couple of questions. Well, if you're sure you're the police... You are Mrs. Kathleen Hampton. Yes. Have you got a son, Mrs. Hampton? Why, I... I never had... I've never had any children. It must be some other Mrs. Hampton you want. Uh, sorry to have troubled you, madam. Good night. She's got no son. Mother, 
Doctor, is he off his rocker? Well, he's been overtaken by some curious fantasy. The mind's a queer contraption, Ben. I'd like to keep him under observation. I can get him a bed in the county. Get me a bed in the county? It'll save you looking for somewhere to sleep. It's a raw, foggy night out. I'm not sleeping in there. They all think they're Florence Nightingale or the Duke of Kent. And who do you think you are? For heaven's sake, don't confuse the man, Ben. He's got problems enough. Because I think he's pulling some con. I'll bet my eye on him. He's taking a rise out of us. I'm all alone in the universe. Don't you understand? Valerie! Mother! Get the county on the line. He'll have to go in. Oh, yes. And then I'll never be able to establish my innocence. Innocence? Yes, yeah, sanity. You know what I mean. I've seen enough convict pictures. Behind bars, protesting your innocence. The tobacco barons, the corrupt screws, studying your law books. The parole board in the police chief's pocket, who's in the big man's pocket, is no hope of justice there. Hampton, pull yourself together. It's only on the outside you can find your own justice or truth or whatever. He's a nutter. Once they get me in the county, I might as well be the bird man of Alcatraz. Now, I'd prefer it if you'd go in as a voluntary patient. You've got a hell. Couldn't you commit him? Yes, all it needs is the signature of his next of kin. <gasps> next of kin? That's a maniac's law for I'm no judge. And wait a minute, Sergeant. Next of kin? <laughs> you'll find my next of kin. And I'll go in as a volunteer. Jim, <laughs> pick up a night. I can even, sir. That's shocking, isn't it? Now, what can I get you? Well, the usual. Oh, a scotch. Make it a double. You don't know me, do you, Jim? I'll place you in a minute, sir. Thank you. Aren't you with the uh, CID? <laughs> I can see you've got a memory for faces. Yes, I'm on the trail of Tommy Hampton. Oh, yeah. Has he been in here lately? Tommy, what was it? Uh, Jim, are you still sleeping with that dark little barmaid? What the hell are you all about? <laughs> can I get a bar? Oh, by all means, Christopher Oldcock. Bite a bit of please, Jim, when you're ready. Well, Brenda's let you out for walkies, has she? Oh, no, not you again. Has anybody ever told you? You look quite lovely when you're angry. I'll have you slung out of here. Point of bitter, Mr. Rogers. Is, uh, this gentleman bothering you? Another double, please, James. And don't spare the horses. Tonight has been ruined for me. I think you better not. Wait a minute, how's it go? He shall sleep in the stable tonight. <laughs> Do you know this character, Jim? I'm the man who never was. Correction. The man who was, but isn't. Started rabbiting for me on the train tonight. He's had a skinful, hasn't he? I don't know him from Dame Clara Butt. Ah, he's with the CID. Good God. Set him up, James. The pint for Christopher Robin and the usual for me. Hey, I'll be here, you And what for you? You can be Tigger. It knocked that one back, Chris. What's wrong? And then you better get off home, sir. Where's a quid? Take it out of that. If you got home tonight, and he wasn't there, Chris. And Brenda had vanished into the pure air. And little Barry... Why, why has your little Barry always got such a snotty nose, eh? Now, just watch oh, it. Charming, 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 charming. Don't misinterpret me, Chris. Barry's an absolutely charming, beautiful child. <laughs> You're the type of force is turning out. Louise is a beautiful child, don't you agree, Chris? My Louisa. You know my Louisa, don't you, Chris? Beautiful child, as big as a pint glass. An absolute chick, my Louisa. I didn't make her up, did I? You look at me very hard, Chris. Go on. Hard. You know me, don't you, Chris? I've never said I was Because I know everything about you, Chris. And Brenda. I'll tell you the very words you said because they're printed on my mind. The very words you used when Brenda found you'd had Georgie Buxton's wife in your bed. For God's sake, keep your voice. Brenda down. says to you, she says, Oh, Chris, and in our bed. <laughs> don't deny it, Chris. You tell me all this yourself, and you just turn around and you said, No, it's any old bed. Right, you bastard, you bastard. Ah, yeah, oh, my God. Now, that's enough. Oh, 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 you're a savage, you are. Don't be long. Go on, get off home before your colleagues come to pick you up. They'll kick you out of the force for this, you know. He's in the CID. Scraping the barrel. Civilised people. Being civilised a bit of a handicap for people like us, I'll tell you. Get off home. Home? This is home. Don't you understand? Look at me. Tommy Hampton. 
You all know me. I blasted well know you, all of you. We all got to work together on the 810 and fornicate. Fornicate with our eyes. We all troop up the steps at night to have our seasons inspected. Don't we, Patrick? Never laid eyes on you, brother. Well, I've set eyes on you, Patrick. How can I make you see? Listen. Patrick Tattersall. District Council in Tomato King, right? He started out with a pram and two turnips and built it into a green grocery chain. Right so far, Pat. You sell your friends short weight because they're too embarrassed to complain, too feeble. My wife wasn't. Valerie wasn't feeble. That's a flaming lie. And our wolf in a sheepskin car coat. Julian Hunter, bank manager. Isn't it, Julian? He sets a time lock. Takes his girl cashiers into the vault. Eight minutes exactly. Time's money, isn't it, Junior? <laughs> and Eddie Giddings. You and Rosie still having those convulsions, Eddie? Eddie locked his six-year-old daughter in the locked one Sunday because she wouldn't let him read his business supplement. He did it to bring her to her senses. It was the only place that could scare Rosie. No lights. Eddie's always the first to slip a few bob into the Bernardo's box, though. If anybody's looking. He got all this stuff out of the CID files. 1980 bloody... Well, who else have we got? Roy. Free spending Roy Liphook. Our big wheel in insurance and grey eminence of Rotary. He, he always works a little bit late, don't you, Roy? And do you know why? I'll tell you. He goes round the office after everybody's left, collecting the typist milk bottles. It's right. He, Emptying the dregs into one bottle so he'll have a quarter of a pint to take home in his crocodile briefcase. Oh, I do you think he got his three-litre Jaguar commission? Oh, 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 Gary Pope. Good evening, Gary. I've just noticed you hiding behind that pillar. Oh, you're not hiding, are you? Uh, Gary Pope, assistant marketing manager. Do you, do you know what the office girls call you, Gary? <laughs> Chief nose picker. Uh, where are you up to, Gary? All right, don't say good night then. Everybody else is absolutely rooted to the spot. Dusting his boss's desk with his sleeve and emptying his ashtray and coming home and acting like Adolf Hitler with his wife. Even his dog crawls under the sofa when Gary gets home. There'll have to be an inquiry into this, all this rubbish in some police data bank. You don't need a data bank in a suburb full of frustrated women. Tittle tattles the occupational therapy around here. What do you think the girls talk about over their coffee and digestives? Knitting patterns and the price of beef? These women form a kind of emotional exchange in Mart. I can tell you who's on what tranquilizer. Would you like me to tell you who's attending the VD clinic? Oh. Or Alcoholics Anonymous? Or who rings up the Samaritans? You're a pathological case. Oh, Bill Burkhart. I wonder when you'll be getting your oar in. Now, what's the latest, Bill? Our raconteur extraordinary. Our star dirty joke teller. The Max Miller of Millwood. <laughs> the biggest joke, though, is he hasn't spoken to his wife for a good six months. Just sits there in the same room, sulking. Thanks for reminding me, Bill. Hey, hey, do you know old man Pyler, who died? Oh, come on, you must know old man Pyler. Lucy, Bill's wife, used to go in and see if he was all right last winter, cook him a bit of dinner. Old man Pyler had this minor bird called Bill. Is that right, Bill? It's supposed to be a talking bird, but it never opened its mouth all the time Lucy was there. It was the old man's biggest worry, that bird. What would happen to it when he died? So Lucy said, to settle his mind, she'd have the bird. She'd give it a home. So the old lad died happily. Oh. So Lucy got Bill home, the bird, I mean. And after dinner, they sat in the sitting room. And Billy uh, never said a word about the bird, did you, Bill? Never spoke to Lucy for a good six months. Then all of a sudden, the bird started talking. It must have been the central heat. He warmed it up. What's up, Bill? It said. What's up with Bill? Cover him up. What's up with Bill? Isn't he talking? Put him to bed. Cover him up. What's up with Bill? Right. <laughs> where is he? Oh, hello, Sergeant. He's another friend of mine. Now, this one, Sergeant. Now, carefully, he can handle himself. Good evening again. You... You again? <laughs> what do you mean, him? The bloke who called said it was a CID meeting. Here, here, anyway. Certainly I've got a couch, Mr. Hampton. What do you take me for, a spurious analyst? Uh, shall I lie on it? Did you sleep badly? <laughs> there was another man in the cell with me. A drunk driver who'd run over an old woman. He kept waking me up to apologise. Oh, very well, but uh, don't drop off. Oh. It's very relaxing. Now, try to keep awake, please. <laughs> Now, I believe the police took you to your, well, what you say is your office this morning. Tell me what happened. Nobody knew me. They'd never heard of me. And your contribution, the work you were involved in? Cancelled out. They're not, they say, they're not even making the product I was responsible for. Uh, Destiny Plastics is only a little backstreet firm, you know. My campaign would have turned them into one of the leaders in the field. 
It took 28,000 responses in a fortnight. Yes, that's very impressive. Now, what exactly were you supposed to be selling? We must have seen the posters. Uh, tell me about them. Lord Kitchener. He's pointing out at the spectator in the normal way, except we gave him different faces. You know, famous comedians and opera singers and sportsmen. Now, Kitchener's saying, you should be disgusted with yourself. Yes, I know the technique. What were you selling? But didn't you see the telecommercial? I'm afraid I don't know until you tell me which one. <sighs> it's a beautiful house with an estate agent's notice board in the front garden. It's up for sale. A uh, little man and his wife come along, prospective buyers, and they're let in by this very upper-class type owner. Uh, the man and his wife are a bit common. She shows them around the house, and it's so swish they're intimidated by the grandeur of it all. Yeah, once you get inside, you see, it turns into a sort of uh, woven abbey. Mm -hmm. The owner shows them around like the Duchess, giving a couple of trippers to the conducted tour. And at last, they, they come to the lavatory. Uh, by this time, the owner's asserted this tremendous moral authority. She opens the door of the loo. The couple look inside. I step back with a cry of revulsion. Their eyes swing round, burning with contempt, accusation. But where's the B-Day? They ask her, giving her the most crushing look imaginable. Yet close-up of owner's face completely punctured. Freeze the shop for three seconds, end of commercial. Oh. No, I've never seen that. What are you selling? What were we selling? I'm rather slow on the uptake. B-Days. It was becoming a household catchword. Comics and politicians were starting to use it in their acts. I'm sorry, but I don't follow. But where's the B-Day? Everybody was saying it. It was a part of the national consciousness. Not mine. Yeah, that's what they all say now. It attracted 28,000 responses, and now there's no record of them. You have a very strict upbringing, Mr. Hampton. I was an only child. My parents were very easygoing. I could have had the moon. Yes. I see your mother says she never had any children. Her ovaries and uterus were taken away when she was 16. It's all on her medical file. Her entire life was built around me. If she never had me, there must be an enormous hole in her life. Now, I think it would help if we could establish when all this started. Tell me about yesterday. Uh, which part? Start at the beginning. Start when you got up. Did anything unusual happen? Well, no. When I came down, the children were sitting at the breakfast table, having a bit of a barney about... What was it? Oh, yes. The Puffin Post had come and some stamp approvals in the post. Oh, and a bank statement had come. I was a bit worried we'd be in the red. You've opened it. Are we in the red? No, only in the black. Could you manage two eggs? Oh, thank God for that. Now, listen, you two. The lavatory is in a disgusting mess again. Somebody's rammed an entire roll of paper down the pan, and there are face flannels... It wasn't me. Listen, listen, and somebody's peed all over the floor and dropped the face flannels in it. Makes me sick to walk in there. How old are you? From now on, you're going to have to use newspaper, the third of you. We should have a bead here anyway. Us of all people. Don't be impertinent. There. Can you manage two eggs? Thanks. And, Barry, I want you to throw those face flannels out. They're always on the floor. <coughs> Louisa... I hope you know you're slopping milk all over the stamps. Oh. Give them to me, Louisa. Now, eat your breakfast quietly and let your father read his paper. Yes, get on with your breakfast. <laughs> Listen to this. Millionaire's will eaten by mice. Eaten by mice? So who gets the money? Well, that's what the court's got to decide. Well, that's made my day. Hey? That a humble mouse can defeat the lifetime schemings of a millionaire. That's the best news for ages. <laughs> what a sense of humour. Mm. Mystery of the world's loss of weight. What's that mean? The world's getting lighter. It's a science report. Scientists using the most sophisticated measuring instruments have demonstrated after studies lasting four years that the world is losing weight at the rate of 0.00, oh, etc., etc., every year. The annual loss is approximately seven tons, the equivalent of two and a half adult elephants or one semi-detached house and its contents. <laughs> How on earth can they know that? I think it's rather obvious, Mum. Oh, yes, Louisa. Do enlighten us. All the wear and tear and the dust that gets kicked up. Explosions, bombs and quarrying. Bits of the earth are going sky high all the time. Everybody knows that. If something's blown up, the fragments fall back to Earth. Oh, wait a bit. The figures take into account normal wastage caused by suction of dust particles into the atmosphere, the release of meteor meteorological and surveillance balloons and satellites, and the proportion of minerals, men and other livestock into the outer atmosphere of space vehicles, etc., etc. So how long before we're reduced to the size of a ping-pong ball? Uh, wait a sec. If this rate of loss is sustained, the world will disappear in approximately seven and a half million years. It could always be those mice. <laughs> well, time I wasn't here. Off to your work of national importance. 
Well, it fills your larder, doesn't it? Oh, don't be so touchy. I'll come out with you. I want you to see my Michael Mustazes in the front. Oh, where's my blasted hat? Under the hall table. Here, I'll just give it a little brush. Oh, I don't, Louisa. Well, isn't anyone going to say goodbye? Bye, Dad. Cheerio. I should think so. Here, under the window. Aren't they gorgeous? Hmm. God, that sewage on the shore. It's a bit nippy. Look, I want you to hide that lavatory paper for our exclusive use. Just look at that colour. They hit me in the eye when I took Bella for a walk this morning. Do you know what I saw when I got up? Hmm? I was looking through the bedroom window. And I saw a big fat duck waddling down the middle of the road, quacking. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, neighbours. Oh, hello, Anthony. Are you feeling better? Have you seen my Michaelmas daisies? Have you seen my giant duck leaves? Oh, I just feel a bit spare and jaded. I've got this longing to enter a spaceship or a monastery. How's Tom? Still flushed with success? Oh, very witty. Cleaning up in a big way? If there's anybody deserves a nervous breakdown, it's you, Anthony. Tom. Come round for a mug of char later, Val. Jean will be brewing at about half ten when I've done the hoovering. So long. See you, Tony. That was a childish thing to say. That wouldn't be so bad if he'd bury his material. It's always flushing or cleaning up with Tony. That's why I refuse to take him for a drink. He's always saying bottoms up. <laughs> well, it fills my larder. <laughs> Goodbye, sweetheart. Mm. You look very fetching in your bowler. Mm -hmm. I'll be about an hour late tonight. A chap from the ad agency is calling in at about five. What a peculiar time. He's flying up to see some client in Leeds and dropping in on the way back. Money to burn, haven't they? If you see Christopher on the train, ask him to bring Brenda around for a drink tonight. Okay. Have a nice day. Yes, well, I suppose there's a degree of verisimilitude in all that, although the duck strikes a somewhat discordant note. Now, when you were home, they'd all vanished. Veronica... Valerie. Valerie, yes. And the children. And the dog. Yes. Bella. The dog. Uh, what kind of dog was it? A St. Bernard. I used to look at it. I used to gaze at Bella. That massive heap of fur sprawled over the carpet. I wonder why such a useless and amusing creature, so much bulk and sadness, had been put on the earth for just five or six years. I don't follow. All that muscular exertion, that gigantic feeding and prodigious voiding... For a few years, utterly futile living. What for? What is the divine twisted intention? Oh, these questions will always be asked. Now, this obsession of yours with lavatories. Obsession? Well, it runs right through the case. The children at breakfast, the dog, bidets, the sewage on the shore. I give odds you're a compulsive hand washer. The Times. What? The annual losses. What was it? The equivalent of so many fully grown elephants. Or... One semi-detached house and its contents. You're not taking that seriously. Oh, I am, you know. You'll find nothing of that nature in the time. I want to see a copy. One moment. Yes, Miss Godfrey? Margaret, would you try to get hold of a copy of yesterday's Times? You might find one in the registry. The right way, sir. There are more prosaic explanations. Oh, yes. The existence you say has disappeared is an ideal one which you have invented because your real one is unbearable. But I'm perfectly stable. We're none of us stable until we're dead. Look here. Say your story is true. Have you really lost such a very great deal? What? Was your existence so perfect? Look, set your achievements against your dog. Square up to it. Which was more futile? There was slightly more to my life than that. I had relationships with people. I know it sounds appallingly banal, but we all mattered to one another. Oh, that liberal humanist balderdash. What? All right, what's your idea of the purpose of existence, then? Now, look, eating, sleeping, fornicating, that's all. Don't let anyone kid you. Come in. The time's for yesterday, Mr. Godfrey. Oh, good, sir. Thank you, Margaret. It was towards the middle at the bottom of the science report. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mystery of the world's loss of weight. Well, well. Valerie. The universe with one snap of its jaws. <laughs> but this doesn't prove a thing, you know. Good Lord, and I think of all the trouble I've had to go to removing all trace of me. There. The tax records, driving licenses, bank accounts. You really believe there's some... Divine meddler intent on conjuring away everything to do with you. Oh, the universe has to cover its tracks. Church registers, Somerset House, that great web of relationships in which I'm just just a minute strand. It's all had to be rearranged, respun. Oh 
bought poor mother's ovaries. What if they vanish, too? You'll be all right. In nine cases out of ten, it all clicks back into place, given time. Or perhaps your real family will come forward. Look, get your photograph in the newspaper. Oh, and somebody will recognize you. In the meantime, face up to it. Start a new life. Many a man would envy you. A clean slate, free from the bondage of social relationships. You don't seem to understand. I'm cut off from every human soul. My reality has to be confirmed by others. A man needs a solid background. You want me to abandon everything I've lived and worked for. Well, what's all that add up to? What? Well, all that muscular exertion, that gigantic feeding, that prodigious voiding. What will future generations look back and thank you for? Promoting universal health and happiness by popularizing the B-Day? What the devil's happening to your foot? You talk as if everybody had to justify their existence. Your foot? Hampton! Good, good heavens, man! My foot? Go, Tom! Where's it gone? Your, your leg's disappearing. Both legs. I'm going! Uh, I'm going! Uh, away I go! Bloody man's gone. I'm working too hard. Mr. Godfrey? Mr. Godfrey? Huh? Eh? Hey? Your tea, Mr. Godfrey. You don't know about it. Uh, what's that? What? Your tea, Mr. Godfrey. Tea? Oh! Hmm. Oh, that's excellent. Oh, you make an excellent cup of tea, Margaret. What time is my next appointment? You've got no appointments today, Mr. Godfrey. You said you wanted to keep the day clear to finish your paper for the Congress. Oh, so I did, so I did. Mine must be wondering, what's this newspaper doing here? You asked me to get it for you a few minutes ago. Ah, do you know I don't remember that? I had to consult my analyst. <laughs> you drive yourself too hard. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Look. Hmm? Oh, read that. The mystery of the world's loss of weight? No, no, not that. Yes. Just above it. Uh, about the mice. Uh, millionaire's will eaten by mice. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what a neat little parable, Margaret, for the futility of all our efforts. <laughs>